What have we been talking about? Tell me. Three kinds of what? Three kinds of wisdom. And um, it's important for us to recognize not only what they are, but how to function in them. We already talked about three kinds of knowledge, and it's important for, for everyone to have those tapes or DVDs. Make sure you have your own copy on three kinds of knowledge. Otherwise, talking about three kinds of wisdom wouldn't mean much to you. There's no such thing as wisdom without knowledge. You understand? There's no such thing as wisdom without knowledge. You can't be wise and be ignorant. The two don't go together. Ignorance and wisdom don't go together. You, you've got to have wisdom and knowledge together. Praise the Lord. We had some reflections on King Solomon. You remember? We said a lot about the man Solomon. And the Bible tells us he was such a great king. He was the wisest man that ever lived until Jesus came. And when Jesus came on the scene, he said, The greater than Solomon is here. Praise God. And we also observed that what made Solomon different was his phronesis. Do you remember that? The Bible tells us that God gave Solomon phronesis. Now, actually, he had all three of them. Don't forget it. We established that Solomon had, he had uh, Sophia, he had Sunesis, and he had what? Phronesis. And that's very important. Can we go again to the book of 1 Kings? In chapter number 4, <clears throat> First Kings in chapter 4, the verse is 29. It says, And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much, and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. Have you seen that? Now, this is remarkable because it says, And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. And I told you that in the Septuagint you would observe that what it actually says here is that God gave Solomon Phronesis and Sophia. What of course understanding there is Sophia. Sophia is Greek for that. But then he gives us something else, he says, and largeness of heart. In other words, an uh, awesomely extensive amplitude of comprehension. That is synesis, an extraordinary synesis. Do you understand? His ability to comprehend issues, his ability to interpret issues was enormous. And that's what God gave to him. So he had all three. And then in the next verse, the 30th verse, he says, And Solomon's phronesis excelled the phronesis of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. All the phronesis of Egypt. He is dealing with phronesis. He says, Solomon's phronesis exceeded all others. Look at verse 31. For he was wiser than all men. 
Hallelujah. That man was wiser than all men. It's remarkable. How did he get it? The Bible says God gave it to him. Actually, there's something very interesting when you study um, the, the Greek rendering of that place where it says Solomon's furnaces exceeded all the furnaces of the east, blah, blah, blah. There, in the Greek, it actually says Solomon multiplied furnaces. The English renders it exceeded. It actually says Solomon multiplied it. And I think that that is very instructive. He multiplied Sonesis. I think that is more like what God will actually do for anybody because what God does is He gives you something, He expects you to multiply it. So wisdom can be multiplied. He says, Solomon multiplied furnaces above all the furnaces of the children of the East and all the, the wisdom of Egypt. He multiplied his furnaces. Now, just in case you're getting in on this for the first time, we're talking three kinds of wisdom. We said the first one is Sophia. Sophia is theoretical wisdom. And then the second one is Synesis, which is critical wisdom or analytical wisdom. And the third one is Phronesis. We're dealing there with practical wisdom. And the Bible shows us the various places of these things in the Word of God. And we also have studied from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 17, that God's intention, God's idea, God's plan is to take us from our level of ignorance, from our mental state of ignorance, into the wisdom. He says, the phronesis of the just, the phronesis of the righteous, the wisdom of the righteous. That is the highest level of wisdom. But that is God's intention. And what distinguish you, uh, distinguishes you between, uh, well, from other people, really, is phronesis, which is practical wisdom. And that is actually what intelligence is. A man is not intelligent if he knows something and doesn't act like it. He's not intelligent. He's assumed to be intelligent, but he's not. You can't be a bigger fool than that to know something and not do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What led to the promotion of the man Joseph? When Joseph stood before Pharaoh, you remember the, 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 the story when he was brought out of prison and stood before Pharaoh. And he had been asked about that uh, dream, Pharaoh's dream, about the seven thin cows eating up seven fat cows, you know. And then uh, 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 Joseph gave the interpretation. And after Joseph had given the interpretation, Pharaoh made a remarkable statement. He said, who else could be wiser than the man in whom is the Spirit of God? Come on, let's look at it. You ready? Book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number 41. We will begin from verse 38. <clears throat> Have you found it? Genesis chapter number 41 from verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this? As this is a man in whom the Spirit of God is. Hallelujah. He knew it was the Spirit of God that worked in Joseph. Look at verse 39. He says, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God had showed thee all this, there is none so. Ma, ma, ma. You see, the word there in your King James translation is what is discreet. Have you noticed it? It says, there is none so discreet. The Greek there is sonetos. Coming again from what we studied about in Sunamai, okay? Which is from sonesis. So he's talking again there about that second level of wisdom. 
He says, there's none so discreet and wise. That word there is also from, from phronesis, as thou art. Why is this important? Because we have to understand the differences. This will help you know why certain people seem to be so intelligent, they seem to be so wise, they seem to know everything, and yet things are not working out for them. When they analyze issues, have you ever watched some of these political uh, debaters on TV? Have you seen some of them talk? You just wonder, if you know all this, why aren't you doing nothing? Why are you where you are? Anybody can talk. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody can talk. Anybody can, can, can tell us about the problems in Nigeria. But I tell you, there are not many who have the solution. I mean, you can talk the solution, but doing it is something else. You got to have phronesis. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to have phronesis. And this here... Pharaoh observed that the man had sunesis and he had what? Phronesis. He had this kind of wisdom. He had both of them. And what did we study about the other day when we were reading in Proverbs chapter 4? You remember the fourth, cha the, the fourth chapter of Proverbs in verse 8? He said, if you exalt wisdom, it shall promote you. He said, it shall bring you to honor. That's exactly what he did for Joseph. It promoted him. It brought him into a place of honor. Phronesis will do that for you. You have synesis, that is critical wisdom. The ability to comprehend. To figure out things. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, let's look at something else quickly. Ephesians chapter 3. <clears throat> Read from verse 3 to verse 4. Want to go. Read it like you're seeing it. Want to go. Let me hear you again. By what? Revelation. Revelation. Go on. <clears throat> How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote it for in few words. I want you to mark that word revelation he got it by revelation read verse 4 <clears throat> whereby when you read you may understand my synesis in the mystery of Christ Can you go through your notes one more time and tell me what is synesis? Just go to your note again. Do you remember? What is synesis? I don't know. No. Uh, critical. Uh, that's, the, that's the first one. Give me what I told you. What exactly is synesis? What, how do you define it? What kind of wisdom is it? What? Uh-uh. I said comprehension. You remember? Yes. All right. The next one, what? <clears throat> Perception. Understanding the ability to understand what? Concepts. And see relationships between them. And then I said it suggests what? Quick 
quickness of apprehension, penetrating consideration, which precedes action. Then I gave you another thing. I said, literally, it means what? Mentally putting together. All right? Now, that's important for what we're going to look at right now. Okay. I told you to read in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 4. It says, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my sunesis in the mystery of Christ. It says, when you study those things which I wrote before, like it says in verse 3, it says, in verse 4, you may understand my sunesis, my comprehension, my idea, my perception of the mystery of Christ. What I understand by the mystery of Christ. What I have gained out of it. What I see. My knowledge of it. Do you understand? Hmm. Now, when you study Paul's writings, you begin to understand these things. That's exactly what he's saying. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For example, in in. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, when you read in verse 14, he says, with us judge, you know, that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Okay? He, he's, he's, he's letting you understand what he thinks about the mystery of Christ, the gospel. This is his synesis. Again, he says, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creation. Why? How did Paul come about this kind of revelation? How could you be a new creation? Because he said, with us, judge, that if one died for all, then everybody died. Now, if Jesus died for everybody, then everybody died. Now, if everybody died, and the man who died for everybody has been raised from the dead, then everybody has come back alive. So if everybody has come back alive, they don't come back with their sins. They come back a new creation. He says you may, that he may understand my sunesis in the mystery of Christ. That's what he was explaining in Galatians chapter, chapter 2 verse 20. When he says, I am crucified with Christ. Because he said, if one died for all, then we're all dead. Now, how did I die? When he was crucified, I was crucified. So he says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Why? Because Christ has been raised back to life. This is Paul's synesis. What about John? John comprehended that he was contemplating the indwelling Christ. He so contemplated the indwelling Christ that he said, Ye are of God, little children. He said, Ye have overcome them. Ye are of God. Ye have overcome them. Why? He said, because greater is the one inside you than he that is in the world. This was his synesis. Come on, are you understand what I'm talking about? What is your synesis? What have you come to know? What, see, what is your perception of the mystery of Christ? This is how you know that you'll never be a failure. Why? Because it says Christ in you. Listen, Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, he says, as we contemplate the glory of God in the mirror, we are metamorphosed. He says, as we contemplate that glory, he says, there is a change, a transfiguration. What is that transfiguration? This synesis, I said, is what brings you into your phronesis. Phronesis is a mindset. Your mindset is based on the controlling. I just read that thing to you. The controlling thoughts, your mentality, your thinking process. So he says, as we contemplate the glory of God in a mirror, this gives us the, the synesis, our comprehension. We contemplate that glory. It is a reflection of that glory. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Then it says, we are transfigured. How are we transfigured? We are given a new mindset. That's why he said, be not conformed to this world. He says, but be transfigured. 
By the renewing of your mind. This is sunesis, the renewing of your mind. He says, have a new kind of thinking. Have a new kind of perception about life based on your understanding of the mystery of Christ. When you do that, you will have a mindset. You will have a mindset. It will control everything about your life. And that mindset is the antidote for success. You either fail or succeed in life according to your mindset. And that is phrenesis. Are you still there? Yes, sir. Are you sure you're there? Yes, sir. Look at somebody and say, mine, oh mine. Mine, oh mine. Oh, 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 oh. Glory. Ay, 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 ay. He says, as we contemplate the glory of God, we are transfigured. Hey, hey. Look at this guy. You know, he's always thought he was a failure. He always thought he would never make it in life. He always thought things were too hard. But when he started listening, 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 listening to Pastor Chris telling him, you can do all things through Christ. renewing his mind he started getting a new kind of senescence a new kind of senescence a new kind of senescence and then he was transfigured with a new mindset come and shout amen somebody hallelujah he says looking at the glory of God in the mirror he said we are metamorphosed that guy who used to be a weakling, now he's talking bold. He used to talk failure, now he's talking faith. Now he's talking victory. Now he's talking prosperity. They say, come on here. You don't even have a job yet. He says, I got it inside me. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> oh, glory to God. You will never be a failure. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. I said, what is your synesis? What is it? What is your perception in the mystery of Christ? Have you seen yourself? Paul found himself in Christ. He said, if any man be in Christ, he found himself in Christ. He said, if any man be in Christ, hey, ah, if you are in him, oh, he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new kind of man, a new creation. And this new creation does not fail. This new creation cannot be defeated. But you see, this new creation has to have... Aha! Get it now? So you go back to St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 17. He says, Turn in the hearts of the children to the parents, and vice versa. And then he says what? And the disobedient to the phronesis of the righteous. Who are the righteous? When you are born again, you are the righteous. He has declared you righteous. There is a certain mindset that you must have. It is called the mindset of the righteous. Huh? Righteousness is the nature of God. There is something called righteousness consciousness. Righteousness consciousness actually means righteousness mindset. Are you getting it now? That's what it's all about. I think righteous and if I can think righteous, I act righteous. Why? Because that's my nature. That's my life. I got the nature of God in me. I see life differently. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Tell somebody righteousness consciousness. Consciousness. Righteousness consciousness. The mindset of the righteous. 
You, you know, righteousness is the nature of God. And you know, it brings us into union with Him, into oneness with Him. It brings us into fellowship with God. And that fellowship means a participation, a, a, a koinonia. Do you understand? We are brought in. There is a mingling together. Are you following this? A oneness. He says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. In the realm of the spirit, there's no difference between you and Him. You are the in Him. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, when you read verse 4, he says, Christ is your life. This is Paul's sonesis. He says, Christ is your life. Ah. No wonder he said, the life that I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Christ is your life. Are you? Uh, uh, uh. Christ is your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Christ is your life. Woo-hoo-hoo. My. There's a new way of thinking. Tell somebody I think differently. So I'm a different kind, of per- a different kind of person, a different kind of man. Say, I'm different. I'm different. I said, I'm different. Hey, why are you different? Because you are a new creation. You know, Christians sing all over the world. As they sing a song and they don't know what it is. I'm a new creation, a brand new man. All things have passed away, I'm born again. More than a conqueror, that's who I am. I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. I don't know, I've been having a headache for two weeks now. You see, they are a bundle of contradiction. Oh, are you saying he may not feel headaches? He may feel headaches, but that's not going to make him say, I have headaches. There's a new consciousness. There's a new way of thinking. Success is yours. Prosperity is yours. Victory is yours. Shout amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. You have to have that mindset. Possibility mindset. Anything is possible. Start thinking that way. Anything. Brother, anything. Who says you cannot be so successful? Who says? Say this. Say, I'm joining my way to the top. I'm going to be the best of me. And there's nothing in the world that can stop me. I'm on my way. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. Hey, 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 hey. (laughs) Remember the words of Jesus. He said, when the spirit of truth is come, he shall guide you into all truth. Who's the spirit of truth? The Holy Ghost. He's the spirit of reality. I tell people, never underestimate the Holy Ghost. You know, sometimes people say, Papa God is at the top, Jesus is his son, and the Holy Spirit is there. And then sometimes they say, Papa God is on the throne, Jesus is his boy, and he's carrying him. And then they put a bird flying over their head, and that's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not a dove. Can you shout amen, somebody? He's not a bird. 
the Holy Ghost is Jesus' daddy. Did you know that? It's very important. They think, they think, people think the Holy Ghost is Jesus' messenger. It's not Jesus' messenger. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. He is the one that proceeds from the Father. Jesus was conceived of the Holy Ghost. And in the most important, St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Are you there? Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was the child of the Holy Ghost. That's important. Someone says, oh, but that doesn't mean... Okay, let me give you another one. Jesus said, my father, which dwelleth in me, he performs the miracles. <laughs> Papa God, Father God was in heaven. Who was the Father that dwelt in Jesus? You, 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 you haven't heard it yet. Look at this. When Jesus received the Holy Ghost in the earth at the river Jordan, the Bible says a voice spoke out of heaven. That's the Father. He said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And Jesus was in the earth. And he received the Holy Ghost to live in him. Then he said, when he began to perform miracles. Now, until he received that Holy Spirit, he didn't perform any miracle. But after he received the Holy Spirit, he began to perform miracles. And he told us the secret. He said, my Father which dwelleth in me, he performs the miracles. You know why I'm telling you this? It's important. Oh, dear, 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 dear Lord Jesus. There was a consciousness. Jesus had the consciousness of the indwelling Father. The indwelling Spirit of God. He called the Holy Spirit, He that proceeds from the Father. He didn't say He that proceeded from the Father, but He proceeds from the Father. This is the Holy Spirit. God Almighty doesn't leave His throne. He's always on the throne. But it's His Spirit that proceeds from Him. That's the one called the Holy Ghost. And you know what? He's the one that has come to live in me. He's the one that has come to live in you. And now today we can talk like Jesus and say, My Father which dwelleth in me. Oh, No one that John said, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. My Father that dwells in me, he will put me over today. My Father that dwells in me, he will take me through the crisis. My Father that dwells in me, he will walk out the miraculous. My Father that dwells in me. Hallelujah! I'm a success. My Father that dwells in me. Can you begin to relate with the Holy Ghost that way? He lives in you. He's your father. I said your father lives in you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh. 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 If you get a hold of this truth. You're carrying your father everywhere. But he's your father. Jesus is my father, which dwelleth in me. My father. 
You know who a father is. He loves you. Your father who lives in you. Oh. No wonder Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. The Greek is orphanos. Meaning I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you as orphans, which means fatherless. He said, I will come to you. How? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit has become your father. You are no longer an orphan. Oh. No longer fatherless. I remember that old church, they used to sing that song, a beautiful song. But I wonder if they understood it. They used to sing, I have a father, almighty father, king of kings, lord of lords. I have a father. But I remember as they sang that song, they looked upward. I have a father. But the father was here. (laughs) He was right in their belly. They didn't need to look upward. He was in the same room with them. My father. I said, my father. My father. Oh, how present he is with us. How could I be confused? My father lives in me. Never a problem anymore without a solution. My father lives in me. He was the one that put Jesus through. The one Jesus called father. That dwelled in him. Has come to live in me. What a life. I'm fixed up for life. Oh boy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, you you, you have this kind of mentality. You carry it to work every day. You carry this mindset. Every day. Imagine what you'd be like. That's That's what Paul said, be not conformed to this world. He said, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He wants you to have a new way of thinking. Praise the Lord. So what are you going to do about it? Now, you turn into Ephesians chapter number one. Let's look at something. Oh, glory to God. Glory, hallelujah. Zivruna haskis Visions chapter 1, I'm reading to you from verse number 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the, uh uh-huh, in my prayers, my prayers, my prayers, my prayers. What's the content of the prayer from verse 17? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the epignosis of him. He said, I pray for you that God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may graciously grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The spirit of wisdom. What do you mean by spirit of wisdom? Did you notice that he didn't say may grant you wisdom? But he said the spirit of wisdom. Why? Already Christ is your Sophia. He is your wisdom. You understand? But now he says, I pray that God will grant you the spirit of wisdom. What does it mean when he says the spirit of wisdom? I talk about the seven spirits of God. What is the man talking about? Oh dear, 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 dear. Whew. 
when how how did they know that Daniel had an excellent spirit because of what he did because of what he said and what he did that's how they knew he had an excellent spirit how did they know Joseph had an excellent spirit because of what he said and because of what he did that's how they knew he had an excellent spirit in other words the spirit took them over all right now what I'm going to do I'm going to maybe um, share with you differently on the spirit of wisdom are you in this place I wish you'd come with me on this what a journey would make on this one anyway let me give you another thing here that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding. I'd like to read it to you from the Amplified Version. It says from the Amplified. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that He may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Of insight into mysteries and secrets <laughs> insight into mysteries and secrets that's what when we talk about insight into reality that's what we mean mysteries and secrets the Bible says the secret things belong to God do you understand now he's granting you what the spirit of wisdom and revelation he says of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light the eyes of your heart the eyes of your spirit flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints praise God Amen. to have insight into mysteries and secrets insight into mysteries insight into secrets I'm not talking about the secret of your grandmother or the secret of your mother-in-law or your papa-in-law outlaw those are not the ones I'm talking about I'm talking about secrets in the realm of the spirit mysteries life has become a mystery to many people they are hemmed in they don't know the way out but he says I pray to God that he'll grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and he explains that it means insights into mysteries and secrets this is the prayer of the spirit for the children of God in other words you see the Spirit of God cannot pray against the will of God this is the prayer of the Spirit and that's the reason why it's written here for us meaning that this is God's plan for us this is God's purpose in your life that the Holy Ghost will lead you into what mysteries and secrets Jesus said when he comes into your life he shall take off mine and unveil it to you he shall guide you into all reality into mysteries and secrets mysteries and secrets mysteries for the success life mysteries for the life of prosperity and abundance mysteries for the victorious life mysteries you begin to you 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 find yourself you find yourself in mysteries of the kingdom the Bible says it is given unto you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God he says but to the outsiders to those who know not God it is not given unto you it is given to understand the mysteries there are mysteries he says mysteries and secrets what is a mystery 
what it means by mystery there. Mystery is not something that is mysterious to everybody. No, it means that it is revealed to a select few. Now he's going to lock you in with it. <laughs> hey, hey. He says, I pray to God that he would grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, in the epignosis of him, the full complete knowledge of him. I pray to God to grant you insight into mysteries. Has life turned around against you? There are mysteries of the kingdom by which you can get into the life and the way of success and abundance and prosperity. That is your heritage. Jesus bought it with his blood for you. Don't you understand? He got the successful life for you. He got the life of abundance and victory for you. You are not supposed to live any other kind of life. But the life of joy. Absolute victory. Oh my goodness. The life of absolute victory. Over the forces of the world. Look at what Jesus said. He said, cheer up. I have overcome the world. He said, cheer up. I have overcome the world. What world? The world and its systems. He said, cheer up. He said, relax. No need to fret. I have overcome the world. And then he went to heaven, but he gave us the victory. He gave it to us. Absolute victory. Complete victory. In the realm of spirit. Remember, he said, all authority. This is what Jesus said. He said, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in and on earth. In heaven and in earth. Huh. I don't know whether. So brady he Sometimes I like to I like to look at the construction of the word. Jesus actually said, "In heaven and in earth." Rather than in heaven and on earth. And there is a big difference. In earth means, in all the intricate issues of earth. It means, in everything that is done in the earth. On earth can be isolated. You can be on earth and be different from everybody else. But when it is functioning in the earth, it means it permeates everything in this world. He said, all authority is given unto me he earned it are you hearing this he was victorious over satan he was victorious over the world he was victorious over the flesh and he gave us the victory he said all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth then he said go ye on the basis of this authority he said go ye therefore and make students of the nations In other words, ah, hey, he said, Go ye therefore, make pupils of them, make students of them. That's what he said. He said, Teach them how to live, make pupils of the nations. That's what Jesus said. And you know, when he said of the nations, he used the word ethnos. And ethnos means different groupings, like lawyers, doctors. This is what he meant when he used the word nations, ethnos. Meaning, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Listen, listen, the Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered into their inheritance. Are you hearing me? It's important. You get a hold of this and you understand the mysteries and the deep secrets. 
you definitely will make students of all others. If you're a lawyer, you make students of other lawyers. I mean, they cannot resist the, wi- the wisdom with which you speak. Your phronesis, kabaya. They can't understand your sunesis. By the time you put these things together and begin to speak, everybody, who's that guy? Why you have made students of everybody? Mysteries. They say there's no cure for cancer. Lie. He said, follow me. Those who follow me shall not walk in darkness. The darkness about cancer. He said, but they shall have what? The light of life. You see, too many Christians act like the rest of the world. There is no cure for cancer. There is no cure for HIV. He is a Christian. There is no solution. In the whole world, they say there is no solution. Are you born again? Don't, didn't you hear Jesus? He said, if you follow me, you will not walk in that darkness of ignorance. Darkness is ignorance. The whole world is ignorant of the cure for HIV AIDS. But there is a solution in Christ Jesus. Somebody, somebody is going to find out. The cure for AIDS. I'm not just talking about when we lay hands on the sick. Oh, I know that, that's supernatural. But I'm talking about a human cure. There is a human cure. Are you still there? Say this with me, I refuse to be ignorant. Say, I got phronesis, phronesis, phronesis. Say, that, I got, I got phronesis, I got phronesis, I got phronesis, I got phronesis. Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus said, he said, he that follows me shall not walk in darkness. Why? Because he says, I'll lead you into mysteries and secrets. He says, but that man shall have the light of life. There is a light that has been given for life. Many people are living in the darkness, but there is a light. He says, but he shall have the light of life. You begin to use that light. When there's darkness about your finances, you use that light. When there's darkness about your job or business, you use that light. He shall have. Jesus said he shall have the light of life. He shall have. It will become your possession. The light of life. I I know that as you're there now, your spirit is burning. Your heart is burning. Am I right? You, You are burning inside right now. Something is working inside you. Am I right? You feel that thing? That's the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Something is being stared inside you. Your heart is beating faster right now. You, 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 you get it? So, what are you going to do? I said, what are you going to do? Are you going to take a hold of it? Now, here's what you do. You begin to pray. Pray that prayer for yourself in chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Pray that prayer for yourself tonight. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, is granting me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Pray it for yourself. Put yourself in there. Come on. Say it again and again. Pray. Pray that prayer now. It's there. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened that I may know what is the hope of his calling. What the riches of the glory of his inheritance in me. Glory to God. Come on. Go ahead. The wisdom of God is working in you. Speaking out of tongues. Speaking out of tongues. Speaking out of tongues. 
something is happening in your spirit. Something is happening in your spirit tonight. Something is happening. The anointing of God is working in you. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God.